Kuwait has been invaded by Iraq and Saudi Arabia will be involved. So we need to prepare both mentally and the, we need to secure the house. I was nine years old then. I was in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. My father, he was a journalist in Riyadh. So one morning he told us that uh, Kuwait has been invaded by Iraq and Saudi Arabia will be involved. So we need to prepare both mentally and uh, we need to secure the house. So at first I was excited because I never thought like, you know, in my life I would ever witness a war. The fear factor wasn't there. It started coming in only after the war started. My parents, like they started preparing the emergency suitcase, like with uh, our belongings and medicines and also some instant food and jewelry and cash, of course. There was a possibility of uh, chemical attack. That's what we were told. So uh, we secured the, you know, the, the AC ducts and the uh, gaps around the windows. We just sealed them with sticking tape and all. They told us to uh, secure the windows also by uh, putting cello tape diagonally across to prevent it from shattering. I also noticed that uh, there were a lot of Kuwaitis. Uh, they were entering the city and, you know, there were a lot of Kuwaiti cars and all that. Our house was near the Ministry of Interior. So there was an empty uh, building so there, like, you know, newly constructed, they were vacant. So they saw the government, they gave those, uh, they allotted those buildings to these uh, fleeing Kuwaitis. And soon it came to be called as the Kuwaiti quarters. The most memorable experience for me would be the gas mask. When my father, he purchased the gas mask and uh, got it home. Like initially we just couldn't believe that there are gas masks at home and then there was a uh, there was a set of instructions that came along with the gas masks and they were qu uh, quite easy to follow. So uh, we used to pr practice like you know just in case if uh, there is an actual attack so we need to be prepared so we used to uh, wear and you know follow the instructions to perfect the movements and all that. When the war started actually like uh, there were a lot of sirens uh, going off every now and then and uh, you could hear the missiles uh, flying above us because our house was close to the Ministry of Interior. So that's when the fear factor settled in. Missiles actually landed somewhere close by and uh, it was the most like thunderous sound I'd ever heard. And the windows just shattered and like, you know, even uh, the car windows that were parked outside, even they got shattered. I, I still remember the sound of that uh, missile. We used to carry the gas mask to school because uh, they told us to uh, come with it. So my classmates, like, you know, they used to uh, flaunt their gas masks and all that. And then I saw that it came in various shapes of these gas masks. My father, once he brought the um, MRE home, he got it in a conference. MRE is a uh, meal ready to eat. And it was in a, it's just like a brown pouch, like, you know, when you uh, break the seal, some kind of uh, thermal reaction takes place and the food inside, it uh, gets warm. So we got to taste uh, meatballs, which the soldiers, uh, the American soldiers and the uh, Saudi soldiers, uh, they were served these MREs in the war zone. So we got to taste it. And it was actually decent, it was like pretty uh, tasty. One, one of the things that happened with the gas mask was like, I had uh, got in uh, chicken pox during that period. So my eldest brother, he used to wear the gas mask and come and visit me. Yeah, so that, that's all the use of the gas mask, I think, because the actual chemical war never took place, thankfully. And after the war got over, my father, uh, along with some other uh, colleagues of his, they uh, went to Kuwait for a press conference and uh, he returned with the unused bullet as a souvenir.